Welcome back to Book Break. Today I am putting the spotlight on one of my favourite and most unusual writers, Helen Oyeyemi. Helen Oyeyemi is an incredible writer. She started writing when she was so young. She actually wrote her first book while she was studying for her A-levels. So she has always been a mega talent and she's got a very interesting backlist. So you may have seen we've been doing this series of videos here on Book Break. We dive into the back catalogues of some of our favorite writers. If you've got any other authors you would like me to do a video like this for, do let me know in the comments below. But today my focus is on the amazing Helen Oyeyemi. So how to describe Helen Oyeyemi's books? Her books are very magical and strange, often leaning into horror, often leaning into fairy tale, leaning into something else that is impossible to put your finger on. Her books aren't necessarily easy to read. You have to pay attention. You kind of get the feeling that you want to read them multiple times to pick out more layers from them. The characters can be slippery and hard to grasp and the storylines don't get tied up neatly. Her writing itself has this kind of elusive quality about it but is so exquisitely crafted that you just can't stop reading. And Helen Oyemi has been developing something of a cult following, so I thought you should know about her. So going through chronologically, starting with The Icarus Girl, which is that book that she wrote in seven weeks while she was studying for her A-levels. Just incredible. So this is a horror novel that is based on Nigerian mythology. It's about a young girl, a 12-year-old girl, who starts getting visits from an imaginary friend called Tilly Tilly, and these visits start getting increasingly disturbing. So that book got her a two-book deal before she even went off to university. She then went to Cambridge, and while she was there, she wrote two plays, which have now been published together, Juniper's Whitening and Victimese. And the experience of reading these plays is almost like reading a short story because Helen Oyemi uses these really descriptive stage directions. So very interesting to read and both of the plays are about the experience of being trapped in some way. So in Juniper's Whitening, that is literal, it's about these three characters who are trapped in a house, unable to escape, even through murder. It's quite a violent play. And then in Victimese, it's instead about a student confined to her room with depression, and this leads to an existential crisis. Her next novel was The Opposite House, which is about two parallel storylines. We follow two young women going through similar experiences in their quest to find out more about their faith and their identity. However, while one of these women lives in our reality, the other is an Orisha, or a minor god. Just gives you some idea of the imagination of Helen Oyemi. Then we move on to the stat that I have got on my shelf, starting with White is for Witching. This is a spin on the haunted house story. So the Silver family are mourning the loss of their beloved mother, Lily. And one of the children, the girl, Miranda, has developed this illness called Pika, which moves her to eat non-edible things, like chalk, for example. And the house is set on the cliffs of Dover, so chalk is really present throughout the book. And the story follows Miranda as she moves away from the house to university, where she develops a relationship with another female student, and then comes back to the house. And the house is this sort of malignant force. The house actually partly narrates the book, so that's very interesting, and it is determined to keep its female occupants trapped. The house is also a xenophobic haunted house. So in its position on the cliffs of Dover as this kind of guard at the entry point into the country, the house sort of personifies racism towards immigrants, and I thought it was done really cleverly in the book. Mr Fox is almost a short story collection. It plays with the form of a novel very interestingly. So this one is set in the 30s and it's about a novelist called Mr Fox who gets a visit one afternoon from his muse, this woman that he dreamt up called Mary Fox. And she arrives and challenges him about the fact that he keeps murdering his heroines in his books. And so they start playing this game together, Mr. Fox and Mary Fox, where they take turns writing stories. And you have to kind of try and keep guessing who's writing each story as the book goes on. So that's how it becomes this sort of collection of short stories. But they're linked together by this challenge and by the themes that you see them playing with in the different ways that the stories end. Boy Snow Bird is probably the most famous of her books on booktube at least. I've seen a lot of people talk about this one. This is Snow White Meets Passing. This book I would say is probably the most accessible 
of Helen Oyemi's books. So I think this is a really good one to start with if you want to kind of get the hang of her style of writing. It's probably the most traditionally written, um, but you know, Helen Oyemi is never gonna do things by the book. So Boy Snowbird, the names of the three main characters in this book. Boy is actually a young woman who runs away from home and she ends up in a relationship with a man who already has a daughter called Snow. So this is the Snow White story, but our main character from that first section is the stepmother. So she takes that role of the wicked stepmother, but we're seeing it from her perspective. And then we have a chapter narrated by the daughter Snow. And finally, we have a chapter narrated by Bird, who is the daughter that Boy has with her husband. I really, really liked this book. I loved the way that it played with the Snow White story in a way that I'd never read anything like that before. Then we've got some actual short stories. What is not yours is not yours is a collection of short stories all linked by this motif of keys and locks. That gives the book this feeling of being interlocking stories that open up into one another. So it's like a short story collection that is also a jigsaw puzzle. Gingerbread is Helen Iommi's take on the Hansel and Gretel story. This is a book that I read twice, back to back, in a row, because I just wanted to dive straight back in and pick out more threads. I loved it the second time around even more. So Gingerbread in this book is this family legacy that's passed down through the generations, and it's this kind of magical slash cursed gingerbread recipe. So we begin by meeting Perdita and her mother Harriet, who are part of this Lee family uh, that the gingerbread recipe has been passed down to, and they live in our contemporary world. They appear to be just an average schoolgirl and her mother, until you go into their house. They live in this gold painted flat on the seventh floor of a building filled with plants that can talk. So straight away you know this is not a normal mother and daughter. They also have a very interesting family history because they are descended from people from a mysterious country that may or may not actually exist. Harriet, the mother, grew up in Druhastrana, but when she searches it, Wikipedia claims that it doesn't really exist. The only place she has ever visited that believes in Druhastrana is the Czech Republic. There, you can find it on maps. Everywhere else, it apparently isn't real. There are so many fun little fantastical loops like that in this book. That is why I had to go and read it back to back. And finally, Helen Iommi's most recent novel, which I haven't read yet, but I'm very excited about, is called Pieces. And this is about a bizarre train journey populated with eccentric characters who seem to be being manipulated by unseen forces. So our main characters are Otto and Xavier Shin, a couple who set off on this train journey. And in each carriage, they encounter stranger and stranger characters. As the journey goes on, it becomes unclear if they are passengers or prisoners on the train and who orchestrated this journey that they're all on. I cannot wait to get my hands on that one. My recommendation to you, if you're looking for something weird and wonderful and unlike anything you've read before, then pick up a Helen Oyemi book. I absolutely love her. I will link here to a playlist of all of the other spotlight videos like this that we have done. Like I said, do leave a comment below if there's a particular author you want me to deep dive into and let me know your thoughts on Helen Oyemi, and I'll see you next time.